Welcome into the Chiefs Report. I am your host, Harrison Graham. Lots of news and rumors to get into on today's show. And yes, we're going to spend a lot of time on Patrick Mahomes right off the bat here. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Clark Hunt, the CEO of the Chiefs, the owner, you know who he is, says that extension talks with Mahomes and the Chiefs will begin this summer. So AKA very, very soon. Obviously is eligible for, for a max extension. New Deal is expecting him to make him the highest paid player in NFL history. At least that's what I expect. That's what uh, people around the league expect. And it makes sense, right? He's already got an MVP on, on his resume. He's already got a Super Bowl and a Super Bowl MVP on his resume. He's quite simply the best player in the NFL. Now he does have two years left on his rookie contract after they picked up his fifth year option, but I would expect the fifth year option to get scrapped and a new contract to start after the season. Here's Clark Hunt saying, quote, the negotiations are something that we'll be getting into this summer, but what Mahomes has said and what we've said is he wants to be a Kansas City Chief for life, and that's our mentality as well. We want him to play his entire career in Kansas City, and that's what we are going to be shooting for. So, what do you guys think? If you want Patrick Mahomes to be a Chief for his entire career, for his entire life, type me. We all want Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City forever, so I better see hundreds of me's down in the comment section. Feel free to type it more than once. Type me if you want Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City for his entire career to be a Chief for life. Go ahead and type the letters in E. It's very, very simple. Greatly appreciate it. All right, Patrick Mahomes. And this is why they're going to try and do everything they can to keep him not only long term for this contract, but for the rest of his career, because he's on a historic start to his uh, NFL career. This is basically in two seasons of work, almost 10,000 passing yards, 76 touchdowns against just 18 interceptions, rating of over 108. He's on a start and on a path that we have never, ever seen before. And he arguably saves his best for the most important time. Sure, the completion percentage is down a little bit in the playoffs, but when the stakes are the highest, Patrick Mahomes has delivered. Even in the Super Bowl, didn't play great for three quarters. Fourth quarter, though, the guy shined. The kid shined, and he delivered at the biggest moments of the game. He's very good. He would be uh, probably a two-time Super Bowl champion if D4 didn't line up offsides in the AFC title game a couple of years ago. Patrick Mahomes is still getting better as a quarterback. That's what's crazy, and he's already probably the best quarterback in the National Football League, and he's just going to keep getting better and better. The Chiefs are going to keep him long-term. That is their plan. That is what I hope they do, and I expect the deal to get done sometime this summer. Speaking of a deal, why not take advantage of this Super Bowl hoodie? Guys, I haven't forgotten. Just because we haven't had sports in a while, I'm still celebrating the Super Bowl victory. You should, too, by going to chatsports.com slash Chiefs. Eight. It's starting to warm up outside, so you're starting to see deals like this for hoodies, you know, be available. So just 25% off. Go to chatsports.com slash Chiefs8. Get this Super Bowl champion hoodie while it's on sale. It's a, it's a really good deal. It's the best deal out there. Go ahead and take advantage. I'll put the link down in the comments and in the description. Continue to celebrate that Super Bowl properly by getting this hoodie. Now, obviously, uh, you know, details will have to iron themselves out. How much does Mahomes get? How much does he get paid per year? Well, he's going to pass Russell Wilson. Like, he's going to make more than $35 million per year because, A, he's the best quarterback in the league, and, B, that's how this works. When uh, franchise quarterbacks become free agents like Mahomes, like Dak Prescott and Deshaun Watson right now who are also up for new deals, they pretty much reset the market. The case in Mahomes is he actually deserves to reset the market, which that isn't always the case. Jimmy G reset it a few years ago. He's not anywhere close to the best quarterback in the league. So this is what I think a contract could look like. Five years, $200 million, $40 million per year, with $125 million guaranteed. That would be records across the board. Uh, most uh, money ever on a deal, $200 million. 40 per year, most ever, $125 million guaranteed. That would be the most ever as well. And you guys say, Harrison, that's so much money. Yeah, it is. But guess what? When you have the best player in the league, that's what you do. And in a few years, he won't even be the highest paid anymore. Someone else will pass him. That is how this works. It's supply, it's demand, it's economics. So, over under $40 million per year for Patrick Mahomes on his new contract. Type O for over, type U for under. Maybe he goes team friendly and signs for 38. That would be team friendly, honestly. He could take, honestly, he could hold out for a couple years, not agree to a new deal until after next year, and sign for like 45 to 50. 
because that's inflation. That's how that works. I don't think he'll do that, but he could if he wanted to. Uh, I think 40 is about right, but type O for over or type U for under. All right, guys, you know the drill mailbag videos every single week here on the Chiefs Report, so use hashtag Chiefs to get your questions on the show. We will get to as many of them as I can. We'll film sometime in the uh, next few days and get that video up for you guys probably early next week. So use hashtag Chiefs. Get your questions on the show. You can ask me anything Patrick Holmes related, Chiefs related, whatever it is, I will answer as many as I can. So use hashtag Chiefs and ask me your questions. All right, this is interesting. The NFL, uh, you know, the teams, the committee, they all come together every year and propose new rule changes and whatnot. The Philadelphia Eagles, I'm just going to focus on this one rule proposal, uh, have proposed an alternative to an onside kick. And what it is is you can go for a 4th and 15 at your own 25. And it's interesting, right? Like, off the, off the bat, you're probably like, oh, why? What's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The onside kick's kind of broken. With how they've changed rules in recent years, you can't get off to a running start. You have to have more people on one side than the side you're kicking to. Like, it's just a mess. Like, they rarely get recovered anymore. So your chances of coming back late are very, very slim. It's something like 10% over the past two seasons. Is this a good proposal, though? The 4th and 15? What do you think? Do you like this proposal? Type Y for yes. Type in for no. Do you like the option of going for a 4th and 15? By the way, at your own 25... Not even the 35 where the kickoff is. Your own 25. Do you like that option? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I have conflicting thoughts here. Uh, for the Chiefs, I think it'd be great. <laughs> they would never be out of a game. Uh, but I don't know if it's the most balanced idea. I'm intrigued to see what you guys think, though. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Patrick Mahomes likes it. <laughs> he quote tweeted Tom Belisero. He said 4th and 15, you know, with the laughing emoji there, saying, hey, that's a piece of cake. For what we got on this offense, Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, Nicole Hardman, those guys can get 15 yards in their sleep. Obviously, even for the Chiefs, it still wouldn't be a super high conversion rate, right? But it'd be higher than an onside kick. Here's some data from uh, Andrew Siciliano. Uh, he quote tweeted himself, basically onside kicks the last few years were like 10%, like I said. Fourth and 15s, however, last year, 20, 23%, the year, few years before that, uh, you know, 17, 18%, not super high, but it's higher than 10% of an onside kick. It's a much better chance. Uh, I am conflicted. I don't know how I feel about it. Maybe if it's like you can use this once per game, right? Or something like that. Do some kind of a compromise because if you can do it every time, some teams might do it a few times a game and just go YOLO with it, especially a team like the Chiefs. That is, you know, can score a lot of points and has a good red zone defense to say, hey, if we don't get it, we'll hold them to three and get the ball back. Like, that's not a loss in the end. So I'm intrigued by it. I'll be curious to see if it passes. I guess, I'm guessing it will not, but I will be curious to see what happens with this rule. Patrick Mahomes is intrigued by it. We'll see what the NFL does if the owners pass it. If you could change or make any new rule or change an old one, like I said, what would it be? I got a couple of thoughts. Be curious to see what producer Dylan says. I think, and I actually like this from the XFL, I think you should be able to go for three. Be like a 20-yard conversion, 25-yard conversion. So if you're down nine late in the game, it's just not over. You can go for three after you score a touchdown. I always thought a three-point conversion would be very, very interesting. So that would be my new rule. Let me know what you guys would do if you were the NFL commissioner for a day. What rule change would you implement? All right, guys, I hope you're subscribed to the channel already. If you are, type sub down in the comment section. If you haven't, I encourage you guys to hit that red subscribe button. We're closing in on 5,000 subscribers, trying to get there by June 1st. Here's the deal, too. Once you subscribe, either if you have already or if you're going to uh, this second, for example, also turn on notifications. That way, you can check your inbox on YouTube will notify you every single time that we put a video up on the channel. So go ahead, subscribe, turn on noties. Greatly, greatly appreciate that. We're trying to put videos up every single day. All right, Jamal Charles, is he a Hall of Famer? Well, the answer is no, because he's not eligible for the Hall of Fame yet. But should he be once he is eligible? Arrowhead Pride wrote an interesting article with a bunch of advanced metrics and nerdy numbers. I'm not going to bore you with the advanced stuff they wrote about. Feel free to go check uh, check out the article if you want. Uh, but the bottom line is, and the main gist of the article was that, yes, Charles didn't have a super lengthy career and he did have some injuries, but at his peak, 
he was arguably, if not the best running back in the NFL for three to five years. That's basically the gist of the article, is he maximized his carries, maximized his numbers. And I wanted to compare him to Terrell Davis because TD did not play in the NFL for that long, but he got into the Hall of Fame. Now, some of you guys are probably saying, well, he didn't win two Super Bowls. Yeah, that's true, but it's not Jamal Charles' fault that the quarterback play was brutal when he was in Kansas City. The defense wasn't great. TD had a lot more around him. Look at the numbers. They're not even close. Like, And the yards per carry, which Jamal Charles is number one all time in NFL history at 5.4 yards per carry, Terrell Davis is at 4.6. That's number one all time among running backs, of course. But still, like number one all time. Barry Sanders and Smith, like he he leads the NFL in history with at least 1,000 carries at yards per carry at 5.4. Like he was as explosive of a running back when he was in his prime as anyone we've ever seen in the NFL. Again, he didn't have a 10, 12, 13 year career of high level play, but I think you could argue that his definitely at his peak, he was a Hall of Fame running back. Did he have a Hall of Fame career? That's going to be the debate in a couple of years when he is eligible. Type 1 for yes, type 2 for no. I expect to see a lot of ones from uh, Chiefs Kingdom here because obviously we all love Jamal Charles, but it's going to be close. I would guess he won't get in, and I think that's a shame because if he didn't have the injuries and had a couple more solid seasons, I think he would get in, and obviously not having the Super Bowl doesn't help his cause. But one for yes or two for no. They also wrote in the article about like a Frank Gore, for example. Jamal Charles is the antithesis of Frank Gore. Gore, look, he's still playing, and he's got, you know, double the rushing yards and this and that. But his career yards per carry is 4.3. Like, look, I think Frank Gore's a Hall of Famer. If you can play at a good level until 37, 38 years old and put up the, compile those type of numbers, you're Hall of Fame worthy. But there's places in the Hall of Fame for guys like Jamal Charles as well. Terrell Davis will tell you that. He got in, and he played less than Charles, and did not put up as good a numbers, especially from a yards per carry and an efficiency standpoint. I think there's a case to make for Jamal Charles. I hope he gets in. I'm guessing he won't, but maybe I'll be wrong, and maybe one day he will have a gold jacket.